freaking cut it close today, so I forgot that the gym that I'm going to closes at 6, and I was dead asleep until like, you know, 3, three something. So 4.30 now, it's only a couple of minutes away, you know, pretty much hour-ish, a little more than an hour. That's about right for arms. It's not really a um, super time-consuming lift. You know, for the most part, I never want to be rushed for, you know, the actual weight session. Like, if I had only 30 minutes to get a chest day done, and then I had to roll, it could be done, but I probably wouldn't love it. You know, just kind of rule of thumb style, I want at least maybe, you know, one and a half times the amount of time that I'm actually going to be lifting for, kind of like, free. You know, I like that extra space. Just because, I don't know, man, it's like I want to kind of go at my own pace. Like, I'm not sitting here with a with a timer or anything in between periods of rest. Or, periods of, in between rest periods. Like, in between sets, I don't click a timer and say, okay, I have exactly one minute. Okay, let's do it. Now it's like, you know, it's more of kind of going by feel. Like, whenever you guys ask, how long am I resting in between sets? I'm really just resting for as long as it takes to feel relatively recovered like if I finish a set of pushdowns like I'm about to in a little bit you know I'll probably sit for maybe a minute minute and a half ish you know by the time I've kind of caught my breath replenish some oxygen in my triceps whatever and they feel strong then I'm ready to hit it again you know it's not like a hard and fast rule it's kind of just you know, as long as it takes so for a set of squats you know, I may take freaking five minutes between sets just because I'm freaking destroyed. You got to really catch my breath, totally exhausted. So smaller muscles usually have a shorter rest period. Like when I do sh when I do shoulders, like the rear delt flies or the rear delt face pulls I was doing yesterday or whenever I just like spam lateral raises, you know, those sets aren't extremely intense in terms of like how, you know, much they kind of take energy out of me. So I could really just you know, wait even less than a minute in between and just, you know, pump them out. So it depends on the lift. It depends on the freaking lift. But if you catch yourself waiting more than five minutes in between sets, I think you're kind of pushing it, you know. You don't need that long, but you definitely need a little bit, you know. If I just waited exactly one minute and then I jumped onto, like, you know, whatever heavy set I was doing, I might not be all the way recovered, you know. Not that I have to... Not that the performance metrics are really the point, you know, I'm not like a power lifter trying to hit singles at like 90% of my one rep max or whatever. But, I mean, it would just make sense that you want to sit down, catch your breath, get recovered enough that you'll feel strong enough to do at least a comparable set, right? So, you know, minute, two minutes, three minutes, really just kind of as soon as you're ready. So it's not like a... I don't think that's the secret, which is going to change up whether or not your training is efficient or inefficient, whatever, right? Just catch your breath and then hit that shit again when you're ready. So triceps is going to be all pushdowns, you know, maybe a little bit of fucking machine dips because there's a dip machine here that I actually like, not like the one at, uh, at the school gym, but you know, we'll see. Triceps is relatively basic for me. And then same thing with biceps, you know. Like, I'll start off with some kind of curl where I can really go heavy. You know, probably dumbbell curls if I'm if I'm guessing, but I guess I'll have to see how I feel. But after that, I mean, I could go, you know, and do in any order, like preachers, cable curls, barbell curls, uh, I don't even know, bent over concentration curls, right? They're all curls. All you're doing is going from here to here with load, there's not a ton of ways to hit the biceps, at least not a ton of ways that hit it any differently than any other. You know, so as long as you do a couple different kinds of curls and you go hard, I think your biceps are gonna, they're gonna like that. They are gonna freaking like it. So I'll get a little bit of forearms in at the end, but I may be a little bit rushed there. So mm -hmm. I think that's, oh, God damn it. I was kind of, I was getting ready to say my little shtick about how I'm feeling the beta alanine. 
but I forgot to put the beta alanine in my pre. Ah, whoops. Well, whatever. It's too late to turn back now. I guess this will just be a lift without the fucking, you know, tingles. But let's just get in there and get started. I've kind of gotten into a habit of starting off my tricep workouts the exact same way every time. Just, you know, by way of doing a really heavy set in the beginning. But, well, actually, I want to change it up for two reasons. For one thing, just to change it up, start with a light squeezing set. Is usually I start off with something just really heavy, trying to put as much tension on my triceps as possible. But also, I'm in a little bit of a rush. So for me to take, you know, another five-ish, ten-ish minutes to get my triceps warmed up for a crazy heavy set like that, I mean, it's just going to take too long. So it doesn't take as long to warm up for kind of a lighter set. That's sort of my logic there. But no matter if you do a super crazy heavy set or a lighter controlled set where you're really focusing on the contraction, I, mean, I say this every fucking lift, as long as your sets are hard and you really push it, right, you're doing something right. So I'm going to sit here and do these kind of cross body, single arm, tricep extensions. And then with these, I'm seriously trying to focus on the fucking burn. Like if I was just trying to pump out reps, you know, I don't know how many I could get, but by way of sitting here really squeezing super hard at the fucking bottom, right? Getting an extra little bit of workout. It should be a pretty solid start. Do maybe one or two like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I was thinking about moving on to just a set of straight bar pushdowns, but let's kind of change it up. Let's get some dips done first. Very different style of set. So those were real, I mean, that was only 30 pounds on either side, right? But I did the reps in such a way that I could only get, what, like 15, 16? So really making efficient use of the weight. Right, I know I throw around a lot of shit when I do like my heavy dumbbell curls or when I stack the leg extension or, or whatever else. You know, it's not like I think that's absolutely necessary. It's kind of just how I like to train. So instead of doing real light squeezing sets, let's, uh, now I just want to kind of put a ton of tension on my triceps by throwing around the stack on the dip machine. So with these, I'm still going to focus on the squeeze at the bottom, but again, the primary like I guess in my mind, fucking factor that's going to fatigue my triceps is just the tension. You know, I'd consider this like a heavy squat compared to a leg extension. At least, you know, for the triceps. <sighs> more. <laughs> 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 
Okay. Let's do some normal straight bar pushdowns next. I like these though. They're they're just different than normal pushdowns. Not the whole stack on either side of these cables, but I do like doing pushdowns like this just because the way that these cables are set up now, like usually when you do a straight bar pushdown, you kind of have to fucking like tilt your head to the side because the cable is right up in your face. But doing them like this, you kind of like just jump over that fucking hurdle. So moderate weight, I'm just gonna fucking squeeze these. Go a little heavier for the next one. Okay. Eh, honestly, this felt okay, but I don't, I don't know. I don't really love that right now. I think let's just finish triceps how we started them. Light cross body extensions like that. And then we can start biceps. My tries are already, well, obviously they're already pumped. We're almost done, but I'm definitely starting to feel the carbs. That's for sure. Triceps are substantially pumped. Oh, we're making good time. That whole tricep workout only took like a little longer than 20 minutes. So if biceps take about the same amount of time, then I'll have a solid chunk for forearms and calves. But good start. Let's just keep this fucking pump up till the end. After a couple sets of the 35, the 55, the 70, I feel like I'm ready to throw the 80s around. I mainly do one set with them just because after one set, my biceps will probably be too fatigued to do the same weight again. So I think I might do like, I don't know, maybe a couple sets just pyramiding down from the 80s. But I'll see how I feel after the first one. Lockman. Yeah, let's drop to the 70s. <laughs> Okay. 
Let's do one more with the 70s, and then maybe do another one with the 65s. I'll see how it feels. Okay. All right, you know what? That's enough dumbbell curls. Let's move on to a machine. I like this machine a lot. Honestly, apart from sometimes like a preacher curl machine, you know, where you got the fucking, you know what I'm talking about. This is probably the only other kind of curl machine I like. This one's a little, you gotta be kind of careful with it because the nature of the movement, it keeps your palms up the whole rep. Like when I was doing those dumbbell curls, obviously my palms were pretty much facing the sky at the top, but at the bottom, I was down here. This is a very comfortable position to kind of pull from. So since your palms are kind of upward, it could potentially kind of wrench your wrists a little bit. So, you know, be a little bit careful if you haven't done the machine before, but by way of fucking twisting your arm like this, it takes a lot more tension off your forearms. So you're pretty much only moving the fucking weight with your biceps. You know, even if you do a hammer curl, it's mainly biceps, but your forearms take over the more that they're turned inward like this. So your forearms are going the craziest in a reverse curl here. So inverse to that, your forearms got the least activation when your palms are totally, uh, what the, f supinated. I know you like that. So let's throw the stack around and just burn out. You know, the fact that it's a machine means the movement path is already set for me. So I don't have to focus on balance. All I get to think about is like going crazy. All right, one more like that. Okay. Oh. So with the partials, I mean, I kind of have to know when to call the set. Because I could probably sit there and do 10 more little, like, you know, barely moving reps. <sighs> Unless I'm doing a movement like those heavy dumbbell curls, where I can hit legit failure. And I know there's, like, probably a 90% chance I'm not going to get one more. You know, other than that, with these movements where you can do a lot of partials, it's kind of up to you to be able to know how hard to push yourself. Because I could definitely see somebody doing a set of that, like, speed or whatever, and hit 10 reps and their, you know, the range of motion starts to go down a little bit. And then they think to themselves, okay, that was enough, we're done. Even though they could have got that extra, I don't know how many partials, but I definitely think that did some extra damage and contributed to a crazier pump than if I were to have just dropped the weight at rep number 10. But that's uh, three sets of dumbbell curls, two sets of machine curls, so I got three left. Um, let's do some barbell curls in the squat rack, of course. Another... I wouldn't say controversial movements, but one that isn't particularly um, perfect, maybe. Just because with these curls, since your hands are totally parallel with each other, since the bar is perfectly straight, when you do them, it can kind of put a lot of pressure on your wrist. So it used to do the same thing for me. Like I never cared for barbell curls, but now what I try to do is instead of keeping my elbows directly at my sides, I try to put them in front of me a little bit. And this, uh, you know, just by way of kind of internally rotating my fucking whatever this upper arm bone is or whatever. It just gives me a more natural movement path for the curl. So I think maybe one here, maybe two. If I like the way it feels, I'll just finish arms with this. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Okay, fuck. Oh. All right, that was a good one, but uh, eh, fuck that. Let's go back to dumbbell curls. I think just a controlled set with the 50s should be good. And then maybe I'll do a little something different for the last set, but maybe I'll just do one more here. So considerably lighter. I mean, almost half as light as the first working set. So I'm definitely fatigued, but I'll still be able to get a lot of reps. So the way I'm going to make this set more, um, I don't want to say difficult, but let's say intense, is at the top, when I get to this top of the curl, I'm not just going to get up to here and then release the tension. Once I get up to the top of the range of motion, I'm just going to have an extra moment of squeezing, right? You can do the same, I mean, you can apply that same logic with like pec flies, leg extensions, hamstring curls, tricep pushdowns, fucking most squeezing movements, you know. Sure, you know, you do normal reps, but if you get to the top and you have an extra little moment where you squeeze extra hard, I'm telling you, the pump will be different. So let's just hit this shit while I still have time. like that let's do one more at the 50s but instead of slow and controlled i'm just going to kind of burn out with quicker reps <sighs> Let's run over to pose down before they close. All right, exposure drop down very, very subtly. Let's see what we're freaking working with underneath this oversized off-season hostile tee. So I've touched on this before, but mid-lift, I like being covered up. Like, you know, I kind of want to see my silhouette through like a really baggy whatever. I mean, what do you think I always wear pants? But by way of kind of staying covered, for one thing, I don't know, maybe I just like being sweaty too, but I like that it kind of makes the workout like sort of build up to something at the end. You know, if, uh, if you already have seen your pump, your whole fucking workout, by the end of it, you know, you're already fucking exposed to it, right? Like I like doing this whole lift, feeling myself get more and more like full of blood. And then at the end, I get to fucking check it out, you know. It's more of an abrupt change. I think that's probably why I like it so much. But eight sets of pushdowns of a couple varieties, eight sets of curls of a couple varieties, all with pretty good intensity. I think triceps was better than biceps today. I probably could have done a couple more reps, but all those sets were definitely within range of, um, let's just say, efficacy or whatever. You know, I kind of think it's silly to do sets with intentional reps in reserve. Like, okay, I'm doing a set of dumbbell curls with four reps in reserve. Just from, I mean, just the nature of like training, you always have reps in reserve technically. You know, you can only push yourself so hard, but physically, I'm sure if you connected some fucking like electrodes to my arms when I was doing those curls, like let's say um, that first set with the 80s, if my fucking biceps were controlled electronically or whatever, I'm sure they could have gotten another like three or four reps. So 
even though it was a set to failure based on like my own perception of what failure is, you know, technically your muscles can still go further than that. So I feel like it's in your best interest to just fucking push all of them as hard as possible. But, you know, then again, people who do that kind of straining, that style of training, they're still big. So, you know, what do I freaking know? But let's, uh, let's run through a couple standard poses before they kick my freaking butt out of here. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Oh. oh yeah this is definitely a fucking carved up arm day if I've ever had one oh. I know right that's a good one <laughs> Okay. Maybe a side tricep to finish her off. Come on. Oh. So it looks like we're skipping forearms and calves today. Not a massive deal, but that's kind of on me for being a fool with my um with my timing. But then again, I did get a little bit of extra rest from that nap. Plus I had some, I, had, I don't know. Whenever I'm bulked up, I always have much more vivid dreams because I've got more carbs, you know, more blood sugar floating around. And that's pretty much what your fucking brain is powered by. So <laughs> I can tell when I'm fully bulked up or if I go to bed after a huge meal, especially with some simple sugars as well, I always get fucking super vivid dreams. Which, that's just kind of cool. Actually, wait, let's bust out a crucifix and then we can get out of here. I'm already staying past my welcome. It's like 402. Oh, okay. Let's get in the car. This is a fucking badass arm day. I will start bringing in a, um, you know, a measuring tape. Just because I'm freaking... You know, I want to know how big these are around right now, unpumped, or no, no, no. I guess technically unbulked, so that we can see if there's some, uh, you know, a growth trend over the next several months. But, solid ass pump. Now time to go eat some kind of food. Not sure what, but I know it's going to be multiple servings worth. So let's get in the car. All right, so... Solid, solid freaking pump. Actually, not even solid. Very good. Very freaking good. You know, part of the reason why I don't, or at least why I stopped training biceps like back and forth with tries, like doing like a set of tricep pushdowns immediately into a set of curls, um, it's not because I didn't think that I, you know, wouldn't get enough rest by doing it that way. <sighs> but what would happen is like when my triceps and my biceps are both fully pumped at the same time it's almost like too much like it kind of cuts into my fucking mobility for the fucking curls so I'd rather get you know a full tricep pump in the beginning and then as my biceps get more and more pumped the tricep pump kind of starts to diminish a little bit but also you know I kind of feel like it just sort of makes sense you know I want to uh I guess it's not really like eating all your dinner before your dessert, but I feel like multitasking in the gym is, I'm not going to say it won't work, but I kind of want to dedicate a specific amount of time just to focusing on like destroying triceps right? or with legs. You know, I want to get hamstrings all the way done first and then move on to the next muscle, you know, going back and forth between stuff. <sighs> I just kind of feel like, you know, you're not giving it your full attention. But I say that, and I've trained for months on end before doing a back and forth style, like, you know, a set of triceps immediately supersetted with a set of biceps. So, 
and I, I mean, I made progress while I was doing that too. So I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just kind of, you know, what I think I want to do and what I think is going to get me, give me a, you know, good results now. So, will how else will the training change on the bulk compared to the cut, which I've been doing? Not much, you know. Same stuff. Same eight rep. I mean, uh. Ugh, dude, I'm fucking tired. No, same, uh, probably around the same eight set style that I've been kind of, uh, that I've been sort of on a kick with. So, I mean, that's what happened today. Eight sets of triceps, eight sets of buys. That's what's going to happen tomorrow. Eight sets of hamstrings, eight sets of quads. When it comes to my exercise selection and, like, my rep scheme and styles and whatever, you know, I think I've got a solid grasp, you know? So, if you... Have trained for a while, right? And you notice you're making tangible gains, right? You're actually making progress doing what you're doing. You know, I'm not saying you should just totally stop trying to innovate your routine and like don't even think about any ways to improve it. Because like, oh, if it works, it works. But to an extent, I mean, yeah, if it works, it works, right? So I'm not constantly every day trying to analyze my training routine like really in depth trying to change things and tweak stuff because for you to make progress with a routine you have to do it consistently and long enough to actually make progress you don't get I mean really you don't get anything out of just one individual workout right if I did just one badass lift and a month later you never know it you know you have to do this shit weeks upon weeks on end and then you know, see if you see some results. So if you don't, then you gotta freaking go back to the drawing board. But if you do, then it's not even like a question of if you're gonna make gains. It kind of just becomes a waiting game, you know. So you gotta be. Uh, I think in terms of you know motivation, it definitely helps to be in it for the long haul, you know. But then also, kind of have. Um, What's the word I'm trying to think of? Not tunnel vision, but sort of like be short-sighted enough to also, you know, be excited about each day. Like, I think in my mind, I'm just excited to see how I'm going to look in like, you know, another couple of years of lifting as I am, you know, just to go in and fucking lift today and tomorrow, you know? So the more often you can enjoy what you're doing, the easier it's going to be. Right. When I wa I can still watch motivational shit and it gets me hyped up. Like if I'm being honest, when I kind of looked at the clock and realized I had to go lift, I wasn't totally amped up today. At least not in the car, just because I was uh <sighs> I was fresh out of a nap. And I mean, it's not like I thought like, "Oh, fuck it. I, mean, I don't want to go to the gym right now." It's like I knew I wanted to get up and go, of course. But as I was getting up and getting my pre together, I definitely still kind of felt a little bit, um, a little bit tired. But once I got my uh, my pre floating around my system, I got in, actually started doing my warm up sets. Then it kicked me into the zone. I kind of forget the point I was trying to say, so whatever. Let's just move on. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I think I'll probably stop at Chipotle and get some. Soft tacos with rice and cheese and a little bit of queso. It'll be a, it'll be a solid source of proteins, fats, and carbs. And then home, just keep grubbing. So this first week, I'm kind of just eating as much as I want because as much as I want is me being in a surplus. Right? It's going to take a while for me to get to the point where I actually have to, you know, make sure... <sighs> make sure that I eat enough to be in a surplus, you know, because the first couple of weeks of a bulk or a cut, if they were, you know, kind of proceeded or preceded by a cut or a bulk, right? Like this first week of bulking, easiest thing ever, because I just finished two months of being in a slight calorie deficit. So for me to get like 6,000 calories down, it's no problem. But as this bulk progresses, it's going to become more and more challenging because uh, my body's going to tell me, like, dude, you're fucking full of food. Quit eating this shit. And then on a cut, it's like, dude, you got to fucking eat something, man. Come on. 
So right now I'm in kind of the uh, I'm in the I'm in shallow water. Very easy to splash around. But towards the end of the bulk, the waves will get bigger, and I'll have to, you know, really make sure I'm a bit more careful with spreading my calories throughout the day to make sure I get it all in. Because in a bulking context, you want to stay in a full surplus state every day. And I need to make sure that I do. Because every time that I bulk, as soon as I miss a day, like if I do my 5,000-ish calories, 6,000, I'll see what I kind of bounce around. Usually probably closer to five, but whatever. You know, if I get that going for a month, all good. But if one day, for whatever reason, I let it slip, you know, I only get maybe two and a half thousand calories in, three thousand, just from irresponsibility on my end, then it totally fucking crashes my appetite. Because that almost like becomes the new normal. So whenever I take my foot off the gas in terms of getting food down, my body like immediately makes that the new baseline. So then it's kind of tricky for me to, uh, that guy just told me to turn my lights on, what a nice dude. But then it's kind of tricky for me to get back on track, you know, because same thing with a, uh, with a cut. If you have kind of a cheat day, your weight is going to spike the next day. Like I had a refeed a couple of weeks ago, um, partially scheduled, partially just because I was like, hey, I'm fucking hungry. So I went from like 234 the day prior to 238 huge jump so cheating on the bulk for me cheating on the bulk means not eating enough calories so I could get up to my full bulked weight whatever for you know month two months on end but if I have a day where I don't hit those calories my weight will drop a couple of pounds now not all just from it's obviously not muscle or anything like that it's just intramuscular carbs and water but you know the state in which you're gonna be most primed for fucking growth is when you're totally full of calories, you know? Like, you almost want your fucking muscle cells to be spilling over with the amount of carbs and glycogen that are filling them up. So when they're totally full, when you're totally full of energy, that's when you're going to be able to recover the best. Well, maybe not recover the best, but let's just say you know, recover the muscular damage that you did from training the best and then, you know, grow back stronger after a, a good night's rest. So... If I take a break, in the sense of like, you know, a light day of calories, then I'm going to get a little bit flatter, right? I'm going to drop some weight, and I'm not going to be in the state which is as primed for growth, if you kind of catch my logic. So basic gist, I got to make sure I fucking get all this food down for the next, you know, X number of freaking months. Not that I think it's going to be that much of a challenge, but, you know, I definitely don't want to get to uh, get complacent, right? Because this week, in terms of weight gain, fucking easiest shit ever. But as time progresses, it's going to be harder and harder to get the food down. And that's when you kind of got to fucking, you know, man up, scarf that shit down, whatever. Like, we've all seen fucking bigger by the day. I'll probably end up watching some Larry Wheels videos when he was, uh, when he was really fucking bulked up. You know, it's fun to watch shit of other people bulking while you're doing it. I've got a bad habit of watching that kind of shit when I'm cutting down. Because then I'm just like teasing myself. You know, watching somebody eat like a fucking 3,000 calorie meal. Whereas I get less than that for the whole day. So if you're cutting down, maybe you might want to avoid the full day of eating videos. <laughs> just so you don't get fucking uh, tempted. But cardio in the morning... And then a fucking sick leg day tomorrow. I definitely need to make sure I get some rest. And squats, leg extensions, hamstring curls, RDLs, adductors, calves. Fucking whole lower body going to get absolutely decimated. As it should. As it freaking should. So I think that's pretty much all I got to say. I'm going to get home and eat. And I'm going to sleep like a fucking baby. I swear I sleep so much better when I'm full of food too. I'm just like, I don't know, you get what I'm saying, I'll freaking see you next time.